Good morning, y'all. Good morning, Good Craig. morning Craig. Good morning. Good morning. I like the very appropriate use of term y'all, by the well, way. Yeah, exactly. I'm getting used to the whole y'all thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, it'll, it sticks. I, I lived in Georgia for a year and a half and I still come up with y'all. But you know what's really funny? It's actually a great term. It's easy to use instead of you. Are you guys coming? Y'all coming? <laughs> I think it's just so much easier. H have you hit the all y'all yet? All y'all? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I've graduated to that yet. <laughs> I'm waiting to hear you utter partner. Hey, oh, partner. No, 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 no. We ain't doing partner. <laughs> no, I haven't done that. So October 6th, we have, uh, there's only going to be like seven of us or eight of us here. You sure y'all don't want to come <laughs> to Texas? It's going to be, but, but the people that are coming, I have Tony, Jean, Tim, Marriott, Kathy, Linda, and my wife and I, and Dan, and this guy, Dan. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, very small, intimate, but it's just going to be a great brainstorming session for those people. It'll be just as good as those ones that we used to do in Texas when we were live, because there was only like 10 people in the room and you get a lot done. So you still have time. If you want to head on over to Frisco, you're going to get to see my new house, which is being built, which is down the block. And we're going to get to the, go to the golf club and there's, you know, it's going to be fun. I'm just saying. Just saying. Flights are, flights are cheap right now. <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. And Tim Gillette will be there. Need we say more? Yeah, if that doesn't scare him away, I don't know what will. <laughs> that may make them change their mind, Tim. That's true. All depends on whether they're looking for a way to twist their brand or not. Because let me tell you, I've been, I've come up with some wing dingers in those rooms. <laughs> hum zingers, wing dingers. Yeah. All right. So there's uh, 13, there's like 30 something registered. So, well, I'm going to start now because this is time management. <laughs> so I'm going to start uh, now because uh, early is better. So I, once again, we're trying to get these down to like 45 minutes. Uh, I think I have like a 40 minute presentation and then questions and answers. There probably won't be a lot of Q&A for time management or maybe there will be um, because it's not like it's any technical stuff. It's just, this is what I do. This is, I'm pretty good at time management. In fact, I would say it's one of my strong points is time management because I do get a lot done in a day and I get a lot done literally before 12 noon a lot. So uh, I'm going to go over the things that I do in time management, along with some just tips for time management. And it's actually a pretty long PowerPoint. So now I'm looking at it going, oh my gosh. Uh, oh, I, I should share my screen. I, I should do, I should learn how to use Zoom. There we go. Share screen. Uh, keynote. Share. Zoom. All right. Um, Shanta, nod yes or no, can you see the screen? My, uh, thank, thank you so much. And you guys are more than welcome to come in and out and, um, and ask questions and ask questions and do all that stuff. Uh, uh, right. All right, so uh, yeah, this is the master class for time management uh, for the Rock Your Life Mastermind. All right, so I, first thing I just wanna say is I personally do not use a time tracking system like monday.com. And here's my theory behind this. A lot of people use these type of tracking systems. My theory is this, and it, it might be the wrong theory, but this is me. So I don't use one of these because I feel it's another thing that I have to do. So if I, if I, if I have a time tracking system, now I gotta do the time tracking system thing. So I don't use any of these things at all. I know they're good. I know a lot of people use those, but then I have to, in my mind, I'll have to learn how to use it. Then I have to enter stuff in there to track it. And I'm this guy. 
I have everything in my book, everything in books. So what I have. Oh, show that larger. Your screen is, is displaying. What happened? Craig, sorry, I'm saying now you're showing us something interesting, at least to me, but I'm only seeing your PowerPoint. You're a tiny little spot. Yeah, but, but, but can you see me as the tiny it's little spot? Yeah. yeah, you don't have to see what's on it, but I just have like this, this little book. It's just like easy. And every day I put new things on it. It's just like my to-do list. But this for me is something that I can take with me and, and, and not have it online from like a monday.com. Now, I'm not saying these are bad. These are great systems, these monday.com type of time trackers and everything. I just feel it's something that would, it's another project that I would have to take on and I don't want to do that. Like, uh, like Roger's saying, this is Carol. Can yep. you just show us a little closer your, not what you're doing, but just a little closer how your list looks. I mean, do you just like write down every other line? I do. Um, All right, I'll give you one. This was uh, May. So like finished trademark, email, um, Orange County people, postcard to former attendees, set up October 2nd lunch with Sheraton. So stuff like literally, and I love crossing out. Do you do it daily or do you do every, it? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go through what I'm doing. But uh, yes, every single day I do a Sunday one and then every single day. And then in between these, I'll give you an example. Hold on. I like the paper system. I don't do tracking. Uh, I mean either. And, but here's why I love the paper system. But then how do you keep track of your like your commitments then? How, do you have a system for that too? Well, like, I, I have a calendar. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, I, and I'm going to show you guys all that. So here in between this book that I have, right? Uh, on like a page when I'm just writing down, just it's also my note taker page. So like for, for like Hayden, I have to buy him a wallet. Nebraska Furniture is delivering. That's their telephone number. And I leave that in this book because I need that number later. So I know I can just refer back where if it's in like a monday.com, then I got to go into my computer and find it. And I just, it, this just works so much easier. So my to-do list in between the pages of my to-do list are pages of notes that I could just write something really, really fast down. I used to do stickies but then the stickies would get lost and I'd put them all over the place. So I just use everything in this book. And I have like hundreds of these books that I actually keep in a filed system that has the dates of when they were from to. So this one started, this actually book started May 31st. And today is what? September, October, no, September 30th, May, June, July, August. Yeah. So it's not even that, but it's a pretty thick book, you know. Anyway, so I don't use those, but I'm gonna go through all the other things. This was just the first slide. I use notes. Um, oh, I gotta go back to here. All right, so the first thing to, to help with time management is I call it create a time audit. So you guys can write these things down if you want, or you could just, you're gonna have the PowerPoint later, but it might be easy to write these down in like a notebook that says like time management. And then there's going to be some good tips in here, kind of, I think. So I, I would, I would create a book of master classes. That's what I would do. Uh, like the master class book. And then just, this would be time management, but you need to create a time audit. Time audit means like, what do you do every single day and how long does it take? For example, I go through emails first thing in the morning and everyone says not to do that, but I enjoy doing it. I got to figure out what's going on for the day with my to-do list the day before, which I'll talk about in a second and incorporate it into what I thought was going on last night into what's actually happening today through updated emails. So that's the first thing I do in the morning and I know how much time it takes me. And then I do these other things that I'll go through later and I know how much time each thing usually takes me. So then I create a time audit of my day, how many hours this takes or minutes this takes. And I, then I schedule it and I try to keep uh, to that plan, to that time audit throughout, because it's usually generally an hour in the morning for emails to get updated. 
Then, um, then we go, my wife and I take uh, uh, Hayden to school. And then uh, we go do our walk at our new house. We walk around that neighborhood. And then I come back and then I take a shower or exercise that if I didn't do a walk. Anyway, so there's certain things that I do and I know how much time they take. So you have to create a time audit of your entire day. That includes how, how many hours do you sleep? How many hours do you watch TV at night? How many hours do you have picking up kids or errands and stuff like that? Grocery shopping. All those things are in the audit. If you grocery shop every day, then that has to be in the audit. If you only grocery shop twice a week, that has to be in the audit. Like Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go shopping. So, but that, I do everything like that on paper. Now, I don't write those down anymore because I've been doing them for so long. I just know how long I have uh, for each item. I plan my week on Sunday. So on Sunday, so I have this book, right? I have that book. Then I also do this. I have a big, gigantic calendar, big calendar right here on my desk. So I have a shot visual shot of everything I need to do. And on that calendar on Sunday, I go through the week of the things that I have to do, whether it's coaching calls. I have a Bible class on Thursday mornings at 6.30, which I have no idea why these gentlemen think that a Bible class at 6.30 in the morning is beneficial because I think those people are crazy. But anyway, 6.30 in the morning is when I have this class. Um, I do the master classes at 11 o'clock my time every Wednesday. So I write these things down and any coaching calls are in there, any uh, interviews. I do like an interview a day or two a day. So I have to write those down for the week because I know when they're coming. Then um, everything like, like uh, 2.30 uh, on Saturday, my son's high school football team has a game. I put that in the calendar. It's not on my to-do list. It's on the big calendar. So I know Sunday at 2.30, big football game at the Dallas Cowboy uh, practice facility, which is kind of cool. So anyway, things like that are on my calendar. Now I try, I'm not perfect in this. I try to do personal in red ink and um, business in blue or black ink. That doesn't always work perfect, but that's the idea. Uh, have a daily plan. So we talked about that, the to-do list, but I, the creating the audit. So on Sunday, I, I create for the week and then I have a daily plan on what I do. Like I said, uh, I, we take our, we, I enter emails, then go to school, then do a walk, then come back and do work till he comes back from school, spend time with Hayden after school. Um, uh, then uh, we eat dinner and then I do night work and then I, if the Chiefs are on Monday Night Football, I watch that, but I have a daily plan. And the Chiefs football is very, very important in the daily plan, just so you know. Someone have a question? I thought maybe, nope. Okay, so I showed you already this, but every day, every night, I'm sorry, every night before I go a bit to bed, I, have my, I write my to-do list in this book on the next page. So, there are things on this page that won't get done today, but I will cross them out if I do them. And if I don't do them, I have to put them on the next page again. Uh, and I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go into an Eisenhower matrix, which I'm gonna do in a couple of minutes, but that's where you can delineate your list. But I'm not gonna talk about that now. I make a major list uh, a full list Sunday, uh, not Sundays, every single night before I go to bed, what I have to do tomorrow, which is now today. So I have my list right now. And there are things on this list that I won't get to today. And I know that because they're not important enough. But if I don't do them, then I just put them on tomorrow's list. Then I keep putting them on tomorrow's list until I actually do it. But there are some things on there that I don't need to do immediately. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, everything I schedule on my calendars with dates. I don't just write down like what I have to do. If it has a date that needs to be on it, I schedule everything with dates, like goals and all these things. I put dates on everything. It just helps me in my mind when I know I have to be done with that situation. Uh, this is the biggest one. When you're doing the time at, uh, audit, 
and you put together your daily plan, schedule harder items doing during high energy times. I have two high energy times, two. In the morning, when I wake up, I'm very high energy. I am the energizer bunny in the morning. It does not, I do not need coffee to get me going. I don't know why, but I just wake up, boom, ready to go. Oh my gosh, tackle the day. Midday to dinner, you can put me out to pasture. I, I would like, I, I easily can fall asleep at my computer for a second. I get tired after I eat lunch. I don't get tired after breakfast. I don't get tired after dinner. But for some reason during lunch, I get a little tired. So I, I don't do any hard stuff in the middle of the day. But I do, my high energy times are when I wake up and late at night, I can, I can stay up from, like if Hayden goes to bed at 10 or 11 o'clock and Natasha goes to bed at, well, she stays up later now too. But if I, at 10 o'clock, I sit down at my computer again, all the things are done with kids and, and, and stuff like that. And at 10 o'clock at night till I can go till two, three in the morning and I have extremely high energy. So that's when I get most of my harder work done. First thing in the morning and late at night. Late at night, I am, uh, I don't know why, but I'm on fire. Maybe it was because I toured with Guns N' Roses and our dates were so crazy and we had to be high energy at night because that's when the shows were. And I stay up till six in the morning, so it's not as bad now. But from 10 o'clock at night to one, two in the morning, I can be, I get so much done. But I also try now to go to bed at 12 or 12.30 because I try to get up early in the morning. So just trying to get eight hours of sleep is very hard for me, but I just wake up like, bing, I'm awake. But find out your high energy times and schedule the harder things to do, the more intensive things to do during those times when you do your time audit. <laughs> I just wrote this down. This is what I do. Every 45 minutes, every 45 minutes, I try to stand up and just walk. So I have two dogs and we have a front yard, a little front yard in my temporary house. And I just like bring them out. They don't run off, which is great. And I just bring them out to the front lawn and I walk in the grass with my bare feet. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a mindset thing. It's a relaxing thing. Uh, someone told me this a long time. It was Sharon Wallig. Uh, she has this juicy jars, these juicy jars. And it was like, take a, take a walk in grass with your bare feet was something that I just wanted to do so bad at the time. And uh, so those are my little breaks. I just walk with the dogs out front every 45 minutes, worst case, every hour. And I have, uh, I'll talk about the clock. I have a clock in here that tells me, okay, time to get up. Because sitting down all day long is very, very bad for exercise and gaining weight, obviously. Uh, here it is, the Eisenhower matrix. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's been around for a very long time. This is basically, I learned this, a variation of this with Tony Robbins. Uh, there's so many variations of this. This is the one that I've seen years and years ago. Uh, but I, this is what I use to put in place. So the Eisenhower matrix is the following. It's four things when you're putting together like a to-do list um, with things that you have to do, organizing yourself. Uh, it's four things. It's do it, schedule it, delegate it, delete it. And I'm going to go through these. So the first one in the Eisenhower matrix is to do it. These are things that have clear deadlines with consequences. So in my to-do list, oh shoot, in my to-do list, I have things that I have to do. Like, for example, picking up kids. If you don't pick up your kids when they were young or something and they have to stay at school, that's a major consequence. They're going to be pissed off or God forbid something can happen to them if they're just standing alone with nobody around if you have young kids. So picking up kids would be a consequence if I didn't hit that deadline because they're standing around at school. Client deadline. If you have a client that you're doing work for and you have a deadline, that's a consequence if you don't finish it that day. If you don't show up to a scheduled meeting, if you have a scheduled meeting with somebody and you don't show up, that's pretty embarrassing. It's a scheduled, con it's, a, it's a consequence if you don't do that. So the initial things on my to-do list, there are things that I have to do today. And those are listed on here and I know which they are, what they are. These things I gotta do today. 
So those are done first thing in the morning. I try to get all these things done, if it, except if it's like a picking up kids. Obviously, we drive my son Hayden to school in the morning. We pick him up in the afternoon. And my wife and I do that together because then we drive to the house since our together time. So to the new house and look at the new house. So those things like happen throughout the day. Those are, there's certain things like picking up kids during the day. But most of these, to, these do it things in the first step, I try to do by like 11 or 12 noon. I try to get all of those done first thing in the morning when I'm in my high energy peak mode. So then if I do all the things that I have to do by 12 noon, my thing is I'm already done for the day and anything else that I do, I feel I'm above and beyond everyone that is still trying to get their stuff done. Like I'm, I'm, I'm further uh, along the curve. I'm, I'm ahead of everybody else. So I play these little games with myself. I try to time it for a certain time. Like I try to get everything done by 11 or 12 o'clock so that the rest of the day, everything I do is just extra stuff that I couldn't have done uh, because I was so busy in the morning. And if I could get my whole list done, then I have nothing to do the next day. And then I can go golfing. Those are the little games I play with myself. So I reward myself if I get everything done on this list. If I do everything on this list, I, I get to go golfing tomorrow. And I try to go golfing as much as possible, but it hasn't been working out because just moved to Texas, buying a house, sold the house, address changes, bank changes, corporation changes. Oh my gosh, my life is in overwhelm. So I haven't been able to play much golf, but in about five or six or seven weeks, should chill out a little bit. We're moving in, it looks like November 6th. After that, it's gonna be crazy for a couple of weeks because furniture will be coming, our stuff will be coming. We have to organize everything. But by Christmas, <laughs> celebration, I should be locked in. Anyway, that's my thing. So, uh, so number one in the Eisenhower matrix is do it. Number two is schedule it. These are activities without set deadlines that are easy to procrastinate. Because these things you have to do, or activities you have to do, but you don't have to do them today. You're not going to die if you don't do them. You're not going to have a consequence if you don't do them. But there are things that you should do. So you got to schedule it. Like in networking, if you want to get more clients and send out a couple of emails, uh, putting together or, or, or finding out when a networking event is, or just networking with people online. The, the, you, you should do that for your business, but if you don't do it today, you're not going to, you know, lose your business. Exercise is a perfect example. Uh, you want to do it every day. You schedule it every day, but you wake up going, you know what? Just a little too tired today. Don't want to do it. And you just let the day go by and you're not going to die. Well, if you don't exercise for the rest of your life, you might die earlier, but you're not going to die tomorrow if you didn't exercise today. You know what I mean? So it's that type of thing, but it's a good thing to do. Now I put turpentine in there for a reason. Right now you're going, what the hell does turpentine have to do? So back in August, this is a scheduler thing, but there's no set deadlines to do it. So right, easy to procrastinate. Back in August, I was painting my house because we were moving. So I, I was just uh, doing some touch-up paint in my house. And my favorite golf shorts and my favorite golf shirt have little sprinkles of paint on them. And it, I guess it was an oil-based paint because it was the baseboards or something like that. So I haven't been able to wear my two favorite things because they have dots on them. And I can't wear something with dots on them. So for two months now, I have on my list turpentine <laughs> on my list. And every day, I have to put it on tomorrow's list because for some reason I can't get it together to go to Walmart or Target or Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a freaking can of turpentine. But and that's a perfect example. It's easy to procrastinate. I know it's on my list. I should do it, but I know it's not critical. So I'll just do it tomorrow. And I keep putting it off. That is a perfect example of schedule it, set deadlines, easy to procrastinate. How many of those things do you guys have? And that's the killer is these things that eh, easy to do. But if you did them, then you'd get to wear your golf shirt and your favorite golf shirt and golf pants at golf tomorrow. 
So I'm going to try to do it today because I'm going golfing with these really important people tomorrow. <laughs> so I want to look good as best as possible. So I'm going to get the turpentine today. God willing. <laughs> I'm going to get my turpentine. All right. Delegate it. This is the one that I had the hardest time with over the years, but now I'm pretty darn good at it. I have a team now. Uh, so delegate it doesn't require our skills, but you need to do them. So like uploading blog posts, social media, accounting. So I, I have uh, Janet Kunst and Katrina Garcia doing blog posts and or podcasting, which I'm doing as of November 1st at my new house, November 6th, obviously moving in somewhere around there. Social media, uh, they do a lot of those things too. Accounting, I have Debbie Morgan that does my accounting, all that stuff. So I've delegated things. You need to delegate things that you are not good at. Designing websites, uh, podcasting, videos, video editing, all those things that you don't know how to do. Don't waste your time learning how to do it. Just delegate it. Very inexpensive ways to do it. We have a lot of people in the mastermind that can help with tons of things. Just go to our Facebook page. Hey, does anyone know how to do this or someone that can do this? And how much would it be? And try to spend as little as possible to get things done that you can't do, but you need done to run your business. So delegated is a big one. It took me years because I was a um, control freak. I still am, but uh, I've learned to delegate a lot of stuff and it, it works out very nicely. Uh, and then the last one is delete it. This is a big one that I, am, I have mastered, except for the eating junk food at the bottom. Well, no, I've kind of, I've mastered that. I've done way better in the last two weeks. But anyway, deleted are distractions that make us feel worse. They can be okay in moderation, like watching TV, spending six hours a day on social media, just talking about the debate last night. What a waste of time that was. And then eating junk food is another thing that makes us feel worse, but it, it can be okay in moderation, right? So these are things you need to delete. I do not watch TV. I wa I'll, I'll be honest. I watch TV late that night when I'm in bed. It helps me go to sleep. I watch King of Queens to fall asleep. And I literally maybe get through five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, because I'm so tired. And I know they say you shouldn't fall asleep watching TV, but it, my mind races so much. I, 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 I have to have something else going on. But I literally watch five minutes of it. But so I watch that. I don't watch TV at all during the day. The only TV I watch is a special event. Like I watched the debate last night, which was a total waste of time, like I said. And, um, and then uh, I watched the Kansas City Chiefs in football and I have golf on weekends. It's in, on in the background, but I don't really watch it. I'm actually working during uh, watching stuff like that, but I do not watch TV. I do not go to bars late at night and hang out and go drinking. My wife and I go to restaurants sometimes to eat, but then we come home and do work again. So there's a lot of things that I've cut out. Social media, I dabble in it enough to just, you know, keep things posted on our Facebook page and Facebook page is where I spend most of the time. But I don't do it a lot and I should do it more, but I should delegate it. Uh, and I will be doing that in November when I move into the new house, when everything is settled. Uh, eating junk food, I've totally cut out. Well, I'm 99% cut out junk food because we're doing the Rock Your Life, Rock Your Health Challenge. Uh, there's 26 of us doing it. I wish there were more. I just think y'all need to get healthy. <laughs> y'all need to get healthy. It's not just about losing weight. It's about getting healthy. Jade Molina is going to give us a lot of tips during the next three and a half months or three more months. Uh, I'm going to get a lot of experts coming in there to give in their tips as well. We just started the group. Not too late to join. It's $50 for three months. And it's a Facebook page. And if you want to join the contest, uh, the one that has transformed the most wins 75% of the pot. And the honorable mention wins 25% of the pot. They were an inspiration or they did something really, really cool. Anyway, if you want to get in, email me about that. But anyway, these, uh, these are things to delete it. So the four again were do it, schedule it, delete, delegate it, delete it. Those are the four things in a time management system that I use all the time. All right. And here's some random thoughts that I just put on the page just to give some random thoughts about time management. 
stick to the plan is the first one. You know, you're putting together the plan. You have the audit. You know when you should be doing things. You know your high energy times. But the hardest thing to do is actually putting all this together is actually sticking to the plan. Uh, and that's where discipline comes into play. And that's where accountability comes into play. That's why the Rock Your Health thing, we're going to try to do accountability things as well, um, putting those together. But we have to stick to the plan. Whatever plan we have, you got to stick to the plan because it's very easy. We're all entrepreneurs. We can do our own things. We don't have to do things. Well, today is Wednesday. It's hump day. I'm kind of tired. Not going to do anything today. Not sticking to the plan today. I'm going to just copy the whole to-do list for Thursday. And while that's okay, then it gets you off the plan. It, life happens again and you go back to your old habits. So you got to, if you're going to do this time management thing and, and you really want to be successful in business, you got to stick to the plan. All right. Uh, does someone have a question? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Roger. Somebody is unmuted that has a television or something in their background and it's coming through as background uh, noise on. Got it. Thank you so much. Let me do this. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I really wish you guys would just like uh, mute. Where's my stop share? Hold on. Where's my zoom? Yeah, I, I hear things going on there. How come my, uh, oh, there it is. Stop share. And we just mute all. Clean now. I've muted everybody now. Uh, oh, so everyone's on now. So that's good. All right. So I muted everybody. If you have a question, just unmute yourself and we'll go from there. I'm going to share the screen again. My keynote. Thank you, Roger. All right. So uh, watch the clock. This is another time management thing. Watching the clock and put time limits on everything. So I have a clock in here that I watch and I know every 45 minutes, I turned it off now, but every 45 minutes, my phone goes off and it's just a little alarm that says, get up, walk around, take the dogs outside, do something, just walk around. But watching the clock is important because the day can easily get away from you. And if you stick into the plan, you could easily spend six hours on uh, social media or emails or something like that. So you got to give yourself time limits. So I do, like I said, a half hour to one hour in the morning uh, answering emails before we go to school. And then after school, I know how long that takes. And then we go walking and I got to be back by a certain time because I have, then my day starts. It's usually 10 o'clock. Then we take a shower and da, da, da. So watch the clock and give yourself time limits. Uh, bef if you have a meeting, before your meeting, uh, time management is know your desired results. So if, you, if we write down goals and we do all that goal stuff, um, if you do all those things, writing down goals, which we should all be writing down, we should know in a meeting what we need out of this meeting. So A, we don't procrastinate during the meeting. We don't talk about whatever. Meetings can be easy. Five minutes. We have a meeting. Let's just discuss this. Let's not talk about the weather. Let's not talk about the debate. Let's not talk about the Kansas City Chiefs, although that's a great subject. But just go into the meeting, know your desired result, get in and out, and that's how you do time management. A lot of us will shoot the shit for a little while, and, and, and if you have things that you, know, you need to do, then the day gets behind you, and then you start procrastinating, and then you feel bad that you did that, and then you say, well, I already wasted a day, and so now I'm done. I'm not going to do anything else because it's a wasted day. That's a mindset thing. So before the meetings, just know your desired results. Uh, don't wait for inspiration. Do it now. A lot of writers, a lot of writers of people that create content say this, I need to be inspired before I can do my work today. Yeah, that's great. My thing is just do it now. Just start it. So I have this tip when you're writing a book or, or you're writing blog posts or whatever it is. The hardest thing to, is to sit down at the computer and actually get started. What I do is when I have this writing mode, when I need to go into writing mode, writing a book, writing these 1001 tips that I'm doing with, with, with the compilation book, um, I just sit at my computer and just start writing something. It might not make any sense, but I'll say, boy, it looks beautiful outside. I wish I was outside. I'll start, start typing that, which gets me into the mode of creating. And then I get inspired to do things and then I am able to do it. 
uh, and able to start writing because I'm in writing mode. The hardest thing is to write the first word. So you just write a bunch of gobbledygook that means nothing. Just write your thoughts and then hone it into whatever you're supposed to be writing. So that's a tip that I do for writing books and just writing blog posts. And the other thing that I do to help me with that, and I've mentioned this numerous times at my seminars, is have a song that inspires you. It's all about music in my world. Everything is, stems from music. I wake up in the morning blasting music because we get inspired. My wife, during the day, blasts music from her computer. Very ins inspirational music. Uh, I have a song. It's What's Up by Four Non Blondes. That is my go-to song when I need to get inspired. I don't know why that's my song. I love the song. But for some reason, when I hear that song, I can get into writing mode. So whenever I struggle, which is pretty much every day, I put on that song that gets me going. And then I play other music as well, just to keep me in that left brain, right brain. If I'm listening to music, believe it or not, I can write while listening to music with songs, with words. So most people will think, well, I can't concentrate if a song is on. Try it. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, I, write, I write very well listening to music with words. So I can hear the words of the song and that relaxes me to let me write better. Try it. It works for me. But you need a go-to song that inspires you to get going for the day. Uh, don't strive to, for perfection. Now, I, I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here because I'm a perfectionist. I get it. I am. But I've learned over the years, it's good to strive for it, but you don't have to be perfect. So I just say now, don't even strive for perfection because we're never going to be perfect. No matter how hard we try, it or we are never going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. So don't just not release things out to the world because it's not perfect. It's okay to make a mistake. We're human. People love when we make mistakes. In my PowerPoints, I've had misspelled words. People love that because they're like, oh God, he's just like me. I would have done the same thing and it makes us feel comfortable. So don't strive for, for perfection. A, you're never going to get it. And B, you're never going to get things done during the day if you're trying to be perfect. Just do it to the best of your abilities and then move on and it'll be fine. Uh, make the most of waiting times. When you go to doctor's appointments or you're waiting in line at the DMV or something, I listen to podcasts, so I have my earbuds with me. So I'll listen to a podcast. I'll uh, answer emails on my phone. There are things that you could do uh, when we're waiting. Most of us are waiting a lot during the day at things. Uh, make use of that time. That's a great time management thing. Organize your email. So in my emails... I have emails, and then on the side, I use Mac Mail. On the side of my Mac Mail emails, I have categories where everything goes. So I, I save everything that's important. So I have uh, for like selling my California house, there's a, there's a email folder. So everything that has to do with selling my California house went into there. Everything that has to do with buying my Texas house goes into that folder. So I organize my email. I address the email, then I respond to it, and then I put it in a folder. And when you do that, you're easy, if you need to refer back to it, you don't have to look through thousands of emails. You just go to the folder, and then you go to the folder, and you see when the most recent one, and, and if you flag it, that means it was really important. But organizing your emails, oh my gosh, takes so much time, uh, saves you so much time during the day. Declutter. I don't think I'm going to even talk about declutter because I've done it so many times on these master classes. But in order to have better time management, you must declutter. You got to declutter your office, declutter, declutter your house, and declutter your mind. These are perfect times right now to be decluttering everything, putting everything in a spot, labeling it, knowing where it is, files. I have these. I have these file folders that have like, this is my AAA file folder. These are my file folders and inside the file folder are all the papers that are for each thing. I have hundreds of these, like hundreds, because every little thing 
Every little thing that I do has a home and they're all in alphabetical order. It's really disgusting actually, but, uh, but they're in alphabetical order or really close to alphabetical order. So I don't have to find where they are. I know exactly where everything is. That is the biggest thing in time management. I never, ever, ever, ever have to search for something except my keys just in this house because I don't have my little key thing that I have that when I install it in my new house. It's a little, anyway, I, the only thing I ever lose is my keys here, but I know where everything else is. Everything is, if you saw my office right now, this is the temporary office. It's still very, very, very organized. The key to time management is organization. Because if you have to find something in a, de in a, in a cluttered office, that's hours, it could be hours searching for something that should be right at your fingertips. So that's a big one. That's a whole thing right there, just decluttering. Exercise gets your mind in the right state. Mind, uh, it puts your mind in a great state for the day. So you're able to do more and you're able to focus more if you exercise, getting the body moving. So the Rock Your Health thing, we're gonna be focusing on exercises. I think Jade is gonna give us uh, he talked about it at another master class, and he's going to give us that website and the little exercises that we could do sitting down and uh, just doing stuff like that. Susie Pruden does that as well, the sitting down exercise thing. You know, ask her for her little exercise program on the Facebook um, group. It's, it's really, really cool. You don't have to move. Well, you have to move. You don't have to get up. It's kind of funny. Uh, sleep well. This is something that um, I've gotten way better at. I used to sleep like four to six hours a night, more leaning to four. I'm really getting six to eight hours now. I'm focused on that. And even if I don't get it, I try to take a nap in the afternoon. It's rare, but I do try to, after lunch, I get so tired. I take like a 10 or 15 minute power nap and then I'm good for the rest of the day. I don't get to do this as much. I wish I could do that every day because they're great, but I don't get to do that as much. Use a calendar. Like I said before, I held up my calendar. I actually have that calendar, the big one that I showed you before. And then I have, then I have this type of calendar that's on my desk that I enter everything in after the month. So my September tonight is September 30th. So I take my big calendar and I enter it in this calendar and then I save this calendar. I save these. I have this, I have calendars that look like this since 1990, when I was with Guns N' Roses, since 1990. I have so many of these calendars, but it just, it, it, it's, a, it's a journal of my life and it's things that I've done and dates that I did them if I ever have to refer back. But I use a calendar for everything. I'm paper guy and I know some of you are like, oh Craig, you're pathetic. Paper, come on, you Google calendar and all those. Now I still have the Google Calendar, I kind of use those, but I, everything is paper because it's right in front of me. And I'm the most organized person in the world. So if I use paper and I could do it with paper, uh, I bet you I'd do it just as good or better than people that use the digital. I bet you, I bet you. Now I'm gonna learn to say no, this is a big one, especially for me because I say yes to everything. <laughs> so learn to say no and you can save a ton of time uh, not really doing the things that you really didn't want to do in the first place. Can you take me to the airport? No, get a, get a shuttle. That's what I do. <laughs> Can you help me move? No, get a moving company like I do. Things like that. Schedule time to have fun. This is the last one. If you don't have fun in life, then you're going to be miserable and you're not going to want to do anything and you're going to be depressed. Like this COVID thing, a lot of depression going on during COVID. There's ways to have fun. You have to schedule time to have fun. My fun is golf and I'm going golfing tomorrow at 3.10 in the afternoon. And that is my, oh my gosh, my peaceful time. Uh, that's what I love to do. So I looked, I'm looking forward to this for a week because I had this scheduled time because I'm so, so busy with doing 4 million things right now. But I, you got to schedule time to have fun in and amongst this. Otherwise, all the things that you're scheduling, if it's all work all the time, you're not going to do it. You're not going to have fun. And then you're going to be back to life happens and not being a time machine, time management machine. So anyway, so that's the presentation right there. I will stop the share.
and I will open it up to any questions. I can't imagine there being a lot of questions for time management because you kind of just do it. And if you do it, that's great. And if you don't do it, well, that's not good. Okay. There's a lot of things. Uh, let me just read some of the chats. Roger, go ahead. Yeah, Craig, you said you transfer undone to do items from one day to the next day. You rewrite them. You don't just flip the page back and see the unquote. Hell no, 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 no. It's my penalty. This, this is what I do. I swear. It's my penalty for not doing it that day. I have to now write it again. So turpentine has been on my list seriously for like two months. And I have to keep writing the word turpentine, which every day I wake up and go, this is crazy. How have I not done this? So anyway, like I said, uh, it's my penalty for not doing it. Yes, I rewrite it every single day if I didn't do it. And in my mind, I don't want to rewrite everything all the time. So that's why I try to get them done that day. It's this little game I play with myself. Sometimes the list is ridiculously long. Like that day on May 31st, that was a long day. Yeah. So Craig, I have a question in regards to your calendar. So yeah. you have your notepad that is a to-do list. Yes. And you have your big calendar. Yes. You put stuff from your big calendar on your to-do list. Uh, no. Because you, so, you have to keep going back and forth kind of thing because they're all uh, things that are due on your big calendar too. That's right. So my big calendar is more for coaching calls, uh, appointments, master classes, um, my Bible class, um, football games, Kansas City Chief when they play, things like that. And it gives me a visual of what the month looks like for things that I have, of my Zoom calls. So things that I have to do. My to-do list is like, okay, I'll give you. I have to transfer money to my B of A account today because I have two bank accounts right now. Because I'm, I have a, the California one, there's no Citibank here in right. Texas. So I have two bank accounts, which is a flipping nightmare. So I have to transfer money back and forth. That won't go on my big calendar. That's a thing that I gotta do today. Another right. one, open up a Texas corporation. So I'm gonna stop the California corporation because I don't wanna pay self um, uh, um, uh, state income tax anymore. And I'm going to open up a Texas corporation. Even if I still go back to California, it'll still be a Texas corporation. That's something that's not on my calendar because I don't have to do it on a certain day. Right. It's on my to-do list. <laughs> so the things that I have to do on certain days, appointments are on the big calendar. The things that I can do every single day are on my to-do list. Got it. Yep. Thank you. De nada. Hey, I have another question. Yes, sir, Captain Video. <laughs> I used to be a total paper guy. Loved yeah. them. I used yellow pads mostly for my cross out lines. And then I switched digital solely because Michelle and I needed to know of kind of each other's calendar and there's a way to cross share. And then when I'm out of the house, which was formerly quite a bit of the days, I needed access to it. And I used to have that big desk calendar how you're gone, I imagine, from your desk a lot. How do you keep track of stuff when you're out of your house? I, I take pictures of my calendar. So my, my, like if I go away, which that's interesting you bring this up because I'm the same way. I used to travel all the time and I wouldn't be sitting here all the time. But this to-do list comes with me everywhere. It's in my backpack with my computer and my, um, and my, um, uh, my computer, uh, my headphones, my, uh, my chargers, all that stuff. This c goes with me everywhere, my to-do list. And even when I'm on the road, I still can do my to-do list. But the calendar, I just take a picture of it, and then I know if I'm gone. But it, when I'm gone, it's usually for two or three days. I know what I have to do those two or three days. But I do have it just in case I have to know if I'm at an event, for example, and they say – Hey, uh, Craig, can you speak at my event on, on um, uh, the 25th? Uh, I, I can look at that calendar and give them an answer. Or I just say, let me go back home to my calendar because I don't have one of those Googles. Now, that being said, my wife has made me 
uh, I have Google Calendar because there are things like you just said that we have to do together. So I do have it for things that we need to do. And it, it does alert me, hey, you have to go with Natasha to this thing today. But that's just the, I, I feel this is my backup uh, for things that we have to do together because she makes me do it. I, I love the paper. I'm a visual guy. I can see my whole month in front of me. Whereas here, I have to go date to date. I know you can see the month, it's smaller. I, I'm just that guy. And that works for me. And, and I'm okay with that. I, if there's one thing that I'm taking from the 1970s is this, is paper. You know, I, I, I've transitioned into being a lot of digital stuff, but this is my thing that makes me comfortable. It's worked for a long time. I am, like I said, the most organized person. I never, I very, 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 very rarely miss something. Like if I miss a, a meeting, first of all, I would feel so horrific um, and it just never happens. But if it does happen, uh, it would be rare, like rare. And so it works, you know? Uh, that, if I may. Uh, yeah. Canceling and rescheduling meetings. It seems pervasive with the circle that Michelle and I are in. We I, make an appointment, they will cancel, reschedule, usually towards the last minute if they don't flake all together, but mostly it's cancel, reschedule. Does that, do you do it? Or are, are you sacrosanct about if you've made the commitment, you're gonna- Okay, that's a great, great question. And I will answer that in two, two parts. Uh, I have coaching calls. I set up coaching calls. And I'm, we're adults. We are all adults. And I guess part of my subliminal training is, like I could easily, if I have a coaching call at 11 o'clock, I could easily call that person if it's 11.02 and say, hey, you, are you calling me or not? It's 11 o'clock, you're supposed to call me. But I don't do it on purpose because I'm kind of like, and I don't want to seem like I'm this pompous dictator or whatever it is. But if they don't call me, that's their responsibility, right? They, they missed the meeting. This happens a lot. And it's a pet peeve of mine only because I want to help them. I really, I honestly do. But I think uh, it also goes with uh, helping them if they miss their meeting and, um, and I tell them that's not cool because I book out that half hour. I book it out and I can't get it back. I mean, it's booked, it's gone. Now, yes, I could do some stuff on my computer while waiting for the call. But if you schedule a meeting with me, I expect you to call me at that time. Uh, conversely, I try not to I can count on one hand how many I've had to cancel in 14 years of doing this because I have the calendar. Now I have canceled because of an emergency or stuff like that, but it is so, 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 so rare. But I respectfully email that person and say, hey, I can't do this. And I try to give them as much time as possible, like 24 hours, because I know my schedule. But I have people that have like an 11 o'clock call this is so rare. It's not, it's not a lot, but it does happen. It's not rare. It's actually not rare. It happens a lot um, where they just forgot the call and they didn't write it down or something. So I very rarely cancel. And here's another thing that I do. I don't schedule meetings so far out. And Katrina Sauer will tell you that drives her crazy. And the reason why I don't do it is because <laughs> I feel bad if I have to cancel something. I feel very bad when I have to cancel something because I know how much I don't like to be canceled on. So I try to schedule things a week in advance. So I'm 99% sure I've locked that date in because I can see my calendar. And once again, rare, rare, rare that I have to do it. So my answer is if I hate rescheduling and I think it's not nice to reschedule. Now, emergencies happen. Totally get that. 
totally, that's a different thing. But if you forget, I don't like that because you easily could do this. You could easily be organized. If you're organized, you're not going to forget 99.9% .9 of the time. So there, there's my long answer. <laughs> uh, someone else had to raise their hand before? I thought I saw, maybe not. <clears throat> I was showing my, my book because I believe in paper too, but I have an electronic calendar so that the rest of my staff knows where I am. Yeah. Um, and I get the reminders, but I use a happy planner. Love it. Love that. And, and erasable pens. Love it. Um, and it, everything is color coordinated. So every, every single task has its own color. So depending on personal or tax side or coaching yep. side, or um, you have your own color in my book. You know, so. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's exactly what I do. I, I'm a big, uh, I don't have the erase things. I use pens and my calendars are a disaster right now. I'm looking at like the 10th. Oh my God, so many things got canceled on September 10th. It was like, uh, oh, Tony Caruso had an event. I wrote that down and then I think she had an event in Dallas. Oh yeah, she had to cancel that one September 10th and made it October because of the COVID stuff. Um, uh, oh, anyway, I just, I can't even read them because I canceled oh. them out so well. Anyway, I, I just cancel out because I love crossing out and canceling. Like if something cancels, I just cross it out because I, I, I don't dry erase it. And the reason why is I, first I put a line through it so I can still see what it was. That's a big, big thing. But then if it's past it and it totally got canceled and I, I, and I rescheduled it, then I, then I totally cross it out. Does that make sense? I just put a line through it first so I can still refer back to it when it was. But then if it gets rescheduled, I go back to that date and and totally cancel it out, which means in my mind, I have rescheduled that. It's a very weird system, but that's what I do. But that, that September 10th, that was a perfect example as to how the Kansas City Chiefs are important because the Kansas City Chiefs played that night. And you can't, I remember you not being able to do things that day going on in Kansas, the Chiefs are playing. Okay, that. right. So while well, Tony had her event during the day, but she canceled that because of COVID, that was way, she canceled that way in advance. Uh, so I put that down way in advance and then I crossed it out. But Tim Gillette uh, uh, emailed me that week or texted me and said, can you do dinner Thursday night? And I said, no. And the reason why I couldn't do it is because the Chiefs were on that night. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> but that's the day too. That was the day we got the email that, that Tony canceled the, the October date. That was oh. she, I have that down in my notes. That that's the day the that's email funny. and she said that. Yep. It's like, uh, oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Uh, Scott, uh, Woody has a question. Hold it. What do you use for time management? Week at a glance or Google? Where do you record your good ideas and concepts? Gr okay, part two. Great, great, great. Thank you for bringing that up, Woody. But I'll, I'll go to part. What do you use for time management? Week at a glance or Google? Definitely don't use Google. I use week at a glance. So I have this three part system. Oh, it took the, uh, it's called at a glance, right? Week at a glance. So that's what I enter everything in after I put it on this big calendar. So I put everything here on the big calendar that I can see on my desk. Then I transfer it at the end of the month to have a record on it for week at a glance. And then I just have a regular binder, uh, school binder for my to-do list. So that is that. Uh, I don't use Google. My wife makes me use Google. So I have a Google calendar because she can, uh, puts dates on it for me. Um, and then, uh, uh, so I don't use Google, but my wife makes me, but it's just a backup. But here's the big one. Where do you record your good ideas and concepts? So it's not, it's over there, but I'll just show you. It's this same book. It's another one of these, it's, this is my to-do book. This is, it's just a regular thing. I have my idea book. And every time I come up with an idea, I write it in that book over there. It just happens to be over there because that's where it is right now. But it's the same exact thing. Every time I come up with an idea, I write it in that book and then I refer to it millions of times. Here's the other thing. In my emails, I have uh, the email uh, folders 
one of the folders is ideas. So if someone emails me a great idea or a funny meme or whatever it is, I put it into that folder. And when I'm doing my, like right now I'm putting together my PowerPoint, my keynote presentation for my October 8th, 9th and 10th virtual event. I go back to that folder and I have these tons of ideas in there that I've gotten over the last six months before the last boot camp, and I incorporate some of them into my PowerPoint. So I have a folder on emails and a book for ideas. And thank you, Woody, for asking that, because <clears throat> I forgot to mention that. That's a big, big thing. You should have a book of ideas, a journal. Those Rocky Life journals are perfect for that. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a page. Gene, I have a three-page list of scheduler tests. I hope it stays as long as it becomes your real. <laughs> so this is very funny, Gene. <laughs> so there are things on my to-do list <clears throat> that <laughs> if you just don't do them for a while, they might just go away, <laughs> right? So I've done that too. Things that weren't important, really, really important. Over time, I kept writing them down, writing them down, writing them down. And it's been on there forever, except for the turpentine I still got to do. Um, but uh, they kind of just, after a while you go, oh wait, you know, that was handled another way. And then you just cross them off. Yeah. And you never, never did them, <laughs> but they just kind of went and away. And I used to do what you do. I used to do that where I copied them over every day. Yeah. And now I just do that for my top 10. But I okay. have a running list that I update every Monday. And everything goes on there. And then that way, when my husband says, did you do this? I can say, it's on my list. <laughs> I love it. And one of these days, it'll get done. Or it just becomes irrelevant. It just, yeah, you're like, wait, that was important three weeks ago. But you know what? Don't need that anymore. So that's just going to go away now. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Dave Nassani, I was considered myself an organized person, but my environment betrays me. I declutter Five times a year, it seems. I slowly drift back into old habits. Not having a place for everything in there is it's not big enough. And then I can barely fit stuff in it. So, so Dave, I feel your pain. Uh, so <laughs> mine has gotten so bad because I'm so organized that I have a storage unit still in California with file cabinets of archived stuff. So I do throw things away like every seven years. You have to keep things for seven years for tax purposes. So every, every year in January, I throw away eight years ago. I throw away that, I shred it, a shredder guy comes. So I have seven years of stuff like in storage. I have memorabilia from the kids. So I get it. I, I declutter, see you declutter five times a year. I'm decluttering every day. So I never let it get cluttered because I still have a place for everything, even if it has to go to storage. <laughs> so do my files need to get bigger? Do I need more files and more detail files? Y yes, is the answer. Uh, and, 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 uh, but I have archives. So my garage, some of you have seen my garage, I have years past. So I have like a two, 2015, all my receipts and everything, all the tax stuff, all the receipts and all the files, all the uh, bank statements, all that stuff. Over everything from 2015. But then I also have like a 2015 archive stuff. So yes, my garage bins are getting way, way bigger because I have more stuff and that's why I need a storage unit. But I still, in my, in my office, I only work with the current year and current things that are going on. Everything else is out of my office and uh, filed but easy to get to in my garage or the storage unit. Well, as you know, my system needs improvement and my memory sucks. And if it wasn't for my calendar system, you know, I'd be like Joe yeah. Biden, you know? And as you know, I, I, I'm the guy you're talking about who, who missed my appointment and, you know, betrayed your, <laughs> your time. Oh, no, that, wasn't, that wasn't a coaching call. That was, that was I even know, worse. I know. Even worse, <laughs> Dave. So, David, I did not. I was not. I did not mention that one. I, I need public humiliation no, because no. maybe that will motivate. All right, he brought it up. I didn't right. bring this up. So, Dave, 
Dave, <laughs> uh, he forgot that he was running a master class a few weeks ago. And if you are on that master class, because I'm easily distracted, right, and I have right. point that I stayed too right. long at, that I could have hurried back and made it. But you know, go ahead. no. But you, you actually forgot. You were like, because he, te I text Dave, are you getting on? And he's like, oh f, <laughs> I totally forgot. But an hour earlier, I yeah. knew about, it and <laughs> I forgot. So you know, I don't know. No, I get it. I totally get it. We forgive really? you, Dave. We forgive you. Thank you. That's all I wanted was forgiveness. <laughs> It'll never happen again. You did it. You brought it up. I didn't even bring it up. But no, I need the humiliation. <laughs> uh, right, uh, uh, let's comments. go, Roger, then Demi. Okay. Uh, if you are a Google person that has switched to Google Calendar, I'm accustomed to the same calendar Craig has, a giant monthly. I could not look at a one day and feel I knew what was coming up. And the worst thing about the months on digital is the items stack without wrapping. And I found calendar plus and color coding, but calendar plus is something Ooh. where each square word wraps. So you can have two or three items and see the entirety of the like three or four words you use for it instead of just the time and half the first word. It completely changed the use of the Google Calendar to me. And it's an add-on called Calendar Plus, completely integrates with Google Calendar. Okay, so I just wrote down Calendar Plus because I'll look at that. I'll just look at it because that's what I have problems okay. with, that that whole visualizing the whole month. Um, yeah. I'm still not going to use it, but I'll look at it. <laughs> Demi. <laughs> so I have a couple of points. A, the, the government can go further back than seven years, just so you know. Um, if you're audited and they find um, stuff that was missed, they can go backwards further. Um, so seven years is not a good rule of thumb. To wait, 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 let me ask you this then. What is the rule of thumb? How, how, how many years do you save? Typically, tip, well, here's the deal. Uh, this was the second part of mine is it doesn't have to be physical paper. You can scan everything in with electronic copies and those are sufficient. So well, that's what we do for our clients is we scan everything into the system. There's no need to keep paper. Receipts will fade, especially if kept in a hot area, those thermal receipts will turn black and you won't be able to read them. Right. So scanning is more than sufficient. We don't keep any more paper than two years unless it's somebody who came and said, hey, I need to file the last 10 years. Um, so it's, we only keep two years worth of paper. Everything is scanned though. But how many years? I heard it was seven years. How many years do you have to keep? Seven saying? years is what they say. But if they go back and they audit you and they find some big discrepancies, they have the authority to open it up further. And the furthest I've heard so far is 10 years back. So, but it's, say they want to audit me eight years ago. What, uh, but, but. They won't send you a random letter saying, hey, I'm going to audit your, you know, your 2005 tax return. They don't, that's not how they do it. It's, they audit the year within the look back window, which the, the look back window is three or four years, depending on, you know, federal or state. Um, so they start with something in the look back window, but if they smell blood in the water, they can open up more. Right. Now I understand. But luckily, I, I have Debbie Morgan and, and people like you will prevent us because we're honest with our taxes. So I don't have any issues. But right. I, but I it's, not, it's not about honesty. What's it about? You, you, you are guilty until proven innocent. <laughs> if they go back and say, prove it, you have to be able to prove it. Yeah. I got stuff. I got seven but years. That's, but that's what I'm saying is if they, if they find something and they go backwards, if they smell blood in the water, and this is all based on the auditor and whether or not they're experienced or if they got a bone to pick or they're, you know, trying to make a name for themselves, whatever it is, you're working with a person who yeah. has way more latitude than they probably have experience. Um, and so that's why I just say, just scan it. You don't need the paper, just scan it and keep it. And sometimes you never know some of those documents that go into your tax return. Uh, we've had to pull stuff for clients that we haven't touched in over 20 years because they passed away and their kids called and said, hey, we're having trouble finding some information. 
um, maybe you have it. And because we keep all of those records scanned in an, an archive, we have it. So you, you scan everything for your clients, like everything? Yep. Well, like, and you scan like receipts and stuff? Yep. What a nightmare job that must be. That's why you have a team and delegate. Holy crap. If you saw my bin for one year, you, you, you'd fire me as a client. No. Oh, that's, yes, why, that's, why I, that's why I pay people. <laughs> well, I, maybe I should start doing that because my bins are getting too full. And that's something that can help Dave as well is you just have an electronic filing cabinet. Plus, for those of us still left in California, you know, the handful of us that could always be uh, wiped out in a fire, it's great because we have on-site backup systems and off-site. Yeah. So in two different ways. So if anything ever happens, we can get up and running in a heartbeat because we, we keep all of that. And we have, you know, fire safes rated for at least an hour in a fire, you know, those kind yeah. of things to watch out for. But having it- There's a seminar right there, people. Go, go to, Demi is going to do a seminar on uh, keeping records. No, seriously, I, I think that's great, actually. Scares the bejesus out of me, but you know. Well, it, it should, because if you think about it, when you go in front of an auditor, um, they typically have no experience as a tax preparer. They likely don't have a complex tax return to understand what goes into it. And they're probably only a few years into what they're doing to really know what's going on. Well, that's encouraging. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so that's why I always tell people, don't do it yourself. We actually charge people extra if they talk to um, an auditor. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. God forbid I ever get audited. I, I would not even No, No, I know that. Yeah, we don't I, allow them to come to an appointment. Nothing because they can things get screwed up fast with somebody like that. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Carol Wagner, what do you do when you're traveling or away from your desk? I think I answered that already. Uh, um, we talked about that with Roger. I think we got that right. We said that, right? Traveling. Take a picture of my calendar. All right. Um, anyone else? Anybody else? Roger. Uh, years ago, Siemens was trying to buy my company and we went to Massachusetts, their U.S. headquarters, with my chief developer and we were trying to integrate our product into theirs and it was working and their developers and my developer were uh, co-project. They left at five and we had to overnight, no sleep, next day, same thing. They left at five and told us to overnight again so we were further along. No sleep. We had a hotel room we hadn't been at. So my developer friend, Dan, looked at me like, what's going on? So we both got in our rental car and I drove to a Tower Records. They were a thing back then. And I bought Four Non Blondes, What's Up? And that song became our company's anthem for two years. Really? Yeah, because- It is, it's, a, it is, it's an anthem. That's what that song is. It's a powerful anthem for women. So it brings out my sensitive side. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. I think uh, our work here is done. Our work here is done. So next week, so uh, the renewals, if you're up for renewal, you kind of have to renew this week if you want to renew, which pretty much everyone usually does because it's so inexpensive. But next week, if you are, if you renew, if you're up for renewal, we have Bo Eason joining us. We're going to do a couple of weeks of some very, very well-known uh, speaker people um, doing master classes. No one's selling anything. They're just going to give information. So next week is Bo Eason. The week after that, I think, is James Malinchek. And I think the week after that is Scott McCain. So three, you should Google these names if you don't know who they are. Bo Eason, James Malinchek, Scott McCain, M-C-K-A-I-N. You should Google these people because uh, great people to know. You're gonna to get to talk to them. They're gonna teach. You're gonna ask them questions. Get to know who you are. See your face. Very, very valuable stuff. All right. I'm going to go to my new house and see what they've done today because it's very exciting. <laughs>
Uh, I'll see you guys are soon, you, I guess. Are you sending out renewal emails? Did yes. I yeah, okay. I'll send them out this uh, weekend, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then the other question I had for you is um, when Scott McCain is teaching on the 21st, Yes. I have on my calendar that there's a mastermind from eight to two. Is that Well, right? that, uh, yeah, it's going to be canceled again. Still can't do it yet. So okay. I'm going to reschedule the uh, October 21st. Hold on. October 21st. Right. We were going to have the mastermind in Dallas on... The 20, it's the first time that it was a Wednesday and Thursday. So I'm going to reschedule because it's going to be virtual unless I miraculous, and it's not going to happen in October. So anyway, so um, it'll be virtual. So I might make it like Monday and Tuesday, the 19th and 20th, and then the 21 will be the master class. So I will email everybody that because I know that is a conflict because I couldn't get Monday and Tuesday when I booked it for Dallas. So I made it Wednesday and Thursday thinking that was genius. And then COVID happened because I, I scheduled this back in January. COVID happened and decided to do all the master classes on Wednesdays. So that's the one conflict day with the mastermind. So thank you. Uh, I will put an email out for that. But the master class will be happening on the 21st with Scott McCain. But the mastermind will be virtual probably the 19th and 20th of November. I'll, but I'll send an email out with the updated dates. Look, hey, COVID Greg. has made a mess of every freaking thing. It's just such a nightmare for schedulers. But you guys are getting, you know, master classes every week out of it. So it's kind of good. And everything's virtual and everything's downloaded on your website. So every, you get to see everything. It's kind of cool. Hey, Craig. Yes, Randy Powell. Hey, I, I've been listening in and everything, of course. Yeah. Um, wonderful talk today, uh, discussion. I just have a quick question. Off, uh, when, I know you're really busy right now, but if we could talk for five minutes, not, not now, but sometime in the next week. Yeah, uh, I, I have your testimonials out there still. I haven't heard back. Uh, and same thing with Katrina Sauer. <clears throat> um, I, look, one of my to-do to, to lists, hold on, what happened here? Where is it? Look, Randy. Wait, look, Randy, I see. Randy I testimonials. See. I see it, and that's it's what I use. To -do list. It's like uh, these people are just, I don't know, they're just taking longer. Who knows if everyone's busy? But yes, uh, give me a, listen, listen guys, I, I say this all the time. I have a cell phone. <laughs> it gets lonely sometimes. <laughs> My cell phone number is 661 904 7273. If I don't answer it, that just means I'm doing something, but I'll call you back. And Randy, if you want to just talk for five minutes, it, give me like an hour and a half, but call me later today. Yeah, I'll 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 Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Awesome. All right. See you all next week or we'll see some of you in the Rock Your Health thing. Go to everyone join Rock Your Health, man. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. I'm not making any money. I'm giving it away to someone. Yeah, but I'm going to win. So, yeah. Yeah. We all want to win. I'm going to keep the donation to somebody's basket. And, and you know me, I'm willing to donate to Demi as always. <laughs> yeah, Tim. Tim, is the, his transformation is mainly going to be internal because he's doing this thing. But, uh, but he might win Honorable Mansion if he's on the website a lot, inspiring people. You never know. You can, you know, there's a lot of that too. So the biggest transformation is going to be like the physical thing. That, that's the winner. And then there's an honorable mention, which I will choose who inspired the group the most, who, uh, you know, did all those things, you know, and, and transformed as well. Greg, I have a question. Yes, Gail. Um, I left the Michigan last week uh, to see my in-laws. Was there something that I missed as far as the Rocky Health? Uh, Hold on. Or something? I got him. Joining the Facebook. Uh, yeah, you missed nothing. The only thing that happened, so on the Facebook page, um, it, it took a long time for everybody to sign up. So right. we really started on September 21st. But right. during that week, people were still filtering in kind of. 
Sure. Jade Molina just put one thing. Everything is on the Facebook page. Right. So you haven't missed anything uh, email wise. Uh, everything is going to be on the Facebook page. Okay. So just go to the Facebook page. It's Craig Doeswalt's Rock Your Health. I think you, I think you're on yeah. it. Yeah, I'm on it. I just yeah. didn't know if there was something that no. was discussed about. So what we're going to put on there is like um, uh, Isabel de los Rios. Uh, she has the Beyond Diet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm asking her if she'll put uh, like recipes on there. Dave okay. Asprey um, is Bulletproof Coffee. Asking him to do some stuff on there. JJ Virgin, we use her, um, uh, we use her uh, powder stuff. Um, Drew Berman from Isogenics. He's a major isogenics guy. So we're going to have like guest people over the, over the next three months, just giving like tips, but everything will be on that Facebook page, not okay. through email or anything. It'll be on that page. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Very cool. All right, everyone. Bon voyage. Bye. Thank you.